be times when you're going to have to target when you got to say it even when you don't see it. Come on. Because the Lord is teaching us that faith has nothing to do with how it looks. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. The Lord is thinking this is a life of faith not a life of facts. Facts change. But truth don't change. And we have to trust God even when we don't understand. understand yes, One more passage comes to us. Y'all know the passage out of the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. 
six. That's right. Trust in the Lord with oh. how much? Oh. And don't lean, don't lean. Oh. on your own understanding. Sometimes God ain't gonna give you enough information. You just got to trust. Right. There's gonna be times when you don't understand. That's right. And we got to learn how to be cool with that. I mean, that's just something, you know, look like, look like, oh, look like I can give, I can do better if you help me understand. But God says, I want you to trust me even when you don't understand. That's right. That's right. No. Come on, say I got. Come on, say I got a God I can trust. I, God. I can trust Him even when I can't trace Him. Yeah. I don't know what he's up to, but I know he's doing something good. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And the Bible says all things work together for good. Yeah. To them that love God and those who are the called according to his purpose. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you over and over, I'm going to tell you again. Amen. If what it looked like right now ain't good, that means it ain't through working. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. We do thank the Lord. Amen. For another opportunity. Amen. amen. To be in the house of the Lord. Amen. We're so glad the Lord energized you and, and and put it in your mind to come this way. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. We give God all the praise. I want to thank God for Queen. Amen. Hallelujah. Love you with everything in me, baby. Amen. I do. Hallelujah. We give God all the praise for all his goodness. Yes. I want you to get your Bible because I don't want to I don't want to delay too long here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get your Bible and turn to the second chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 2. Hallelujah. Excuse me, son. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter number 2. We give God praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We were having our Monday Night Live last week, last Monday. Hallelujah. And a blessed couple came in and sat, sat in with us. I never met them before in our life. But they said that they were going to be here this morning. They just walked in. Amen. Oh, I can't think of the name, but I do know it's R&R. &R. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I know that part. So that's Regina. Is it Regina? Roger Renee. Roger. Renee. Roger and Renee. Amen. Roger and Renee. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're honored to have them this morning. Amen. 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 Get your Bible. We're going to go to class. Deuteronomy chapter 2. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to do the second part of what I did last week. The Lord won't let me get away from this change. Yes. Because change is something we all need. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. Somebody holler change. Change. Hallelujah. Somebody has said and right for the so that the Lord loves us just as we are. Yes. But the reality of it is he loves us too much to leave us yes. as we are. Yes. How many know God wants to change you? Amen. I'm finna shock some of you. God didn't save you to take you to heaven. Right. Come on. If he did, he'd have killed you when he saved you. Will help me. It's gonna get tight already, huh? God didn't save you to take you to glory. God saved you so He can bring glory to you. Jesus. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! God wants our life on earth to be as the days of heaven on earth. Amen. Hallelujah! Queen and I was talking the other day. I said, Queen, I'm asking this question: If heaven is like where you go to church, do you really want to go there? Oh God! That's a good question, ain't it? Because we, you know, we, that, that's what church is supposed to be. That's the right. church atmosphere, the church setting is supposed to be a taste of heaven Amen. and earth. Amen. Hallelujah. We're God's colony. Yes. We're God's embassy. We are the kingdom of God. We're in God's kingdom. Say yes. amen. amen. Hallelujah. I like that song with that little collaboration between Kirk Franklin and Maverick City Music. If you want to know what heaven looks like, it's looking like me and you. If you want to know what heaven sounds like, just let it fill the room. Amen. Somebody say, somebody say, this is what heaven looks like. This is what heaven looks like. Are you sure you want to go? <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 2, we see with the children of Israel, amen. God has brought them out of Egyptian captivity. Yes. Hallelujah. And we're going to chapter 2, glory to God. Hallelujah. Let somebody get their phone quiet. First order of business, when you come to church, silence your phone. Yes. Amen. 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 Just tell me, hallelujah. Because <laughs> we don't want no distractions. Hallelujah. Deuter uh, Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 1. It says, Then we turned and took our journey unto the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. And the Lord spoke unto me as we compassed Mount Seir many days. Yes. Say many days. Many days. Now, when you study this out, that many days translates into 38 years. Ooh. See, that's a lot of days. That's a lot of days. Many days. This, this, this is interesting. Sometimes 
when the Bible states, sometimes the Bible understates things. Yeah. When the Lord said they come past the mountain for many days. It's 30, it's a 38 year period. We're working on 40 years here, Jesus, hallelujah. And still going in circles. Jesus, my Lord, my Lord. Watch this. And the Lord spoke unto me saying, you have compassed, in verse 3, you have compassed this mountain long enough. Yeah. Mm. Come on, say it's too long. Too long. God says you've been walking in circles long enough. Now turn you northward. Yeah. Northward. Yeah. This is interesting. Hallelujah. When you look at that word northward, hallelujah. This word northward in the Hebrew is to it it, it convey it, it connotates the idea of something hidden. Yeah. A mystery. Something secret, if you will. Other, in other words, it's a way you've never been before. Yeah. Anybody ready to go where they've never been before? Yeah, yeah. Is there anybody in the house ready to experience something they've never experienced before? Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Well, if you're ready to really do something you've never done, you got to be willing to leave that mountain. Yeah. Yes. Come on, say I'm ready. I'm, come on, say I'm ready. I'm ready. To stop, to stop. Walking, in circles. walking in circles. You've come past this mountain long enough. Yeah. Now turn you northward. This is after 38 years of wilderness wandering. After 38 years of walking around the same mountain, after 38 years of doing the same old thing, hallelujah. I don't know what's wrong with us sometimes, you know, and I do know, because I know something about the human predicament. We're creatures of habit, and we resist change. Y'all can say what you want to say, but we don't want to change. We want stuff to always be like it's always been. Jesus. Hallelujah. And then the minute somebody tell you talking about change, all of a sudden you get an yeah, attitude. Man, yeah. Amen. But I told you last week, and I think it's worth of repetition, that growth demands change. Yes, we can't grow. We ain't willing to change. Yes. Right. Hallelujah. Think about it. If what I'm doing ain't working, I got to change what I'm doing. I said if what I'm doing ain't working, come on here somebody. Hallelujah. I don't know why in the world we say that's a form of insanity. A form of insanity is to do the same thing over and over and over. But expect different results. Yeah. Right. Come on, say if you want different, if you got to do different. Yeah. And sometimes change requires radical behavior. Yeah. Sometimes you start obeying God, you're going to shock everybody. Because people used to you being a certain way. They used to you reacting a certain way. They used to you doing a certain thing. All of a sudden you bust out for something ain't nobody ever seen. Oh my God, he out of his mind. You tell him, tell him like I always say, I'm not out of your, I'm not out of, I'm not, I'm not out of my mind, I'm out of your mind. Come on, son, maybe out of your mind. Out of your mind. And it's time for us to get out of some folks' mind. Y'all missing this. Hallelujah. I'm not out of my mind, I'm out of your mind. Because you have gotten so accustomed to me responding and reacting a certain way, that all of a sudden I bust out with something entirely different. Now you got a problem with me. I'm getting preacher. ready to disturb some folks. Yeah, hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. Yeah. I'm yeah. getting ready to be a little bit more radical. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. Because the things that I'm wanting from God and the thing that God is wanting from us is going to require some radical behavior. Yeah. Yeah. My Lord. I didn't say wicked behavior. Come on now. Please yeah. don't confuse radical with wicked. Right. Yeah. Right. Come on. Like some folks do. It's time to get it's time to come out from around this mountain. That's right. Hallelujah. So we've taken this journey for all these years. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and again, I, I always call you back. I don't, I don't care what message you hear from this pulpit. It's going to always call you back to this new beginning. Amen. Because in, in Christ Jesus, in God, there is a new beginning. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Go down a few verses. Hallelujah. Same chapter. I want you to go down. Let me see here. Hallelujah. All right. Here it is. God, God is telling us it's time to leave here now. But now, now here, here's, the, here's, the, here's the strategy. Go down to verse 24. All right. A lot of us, I think, in the building, I think I think I can get, I, I think I can get some consensus in the room that a lot of us know that we need to change. We just don't know how. That's it, right. That's it. I think I can get a consensus Jesus. in the room. That we know we know that our lives needs there's something. Come on, anybody know there's something different need to be happening in your life? Amen. Even if you don't, even if right now you don't know how to do it, I do know that something got to be done. Amen. Amen. I know that if I want to get something that God has for me, hallelujah, i got to do something different than what I'm doing That's right now. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Let me, let me see if I give you a hint here. Go down to verse 24. Yeah. What's the first two words in verse 24? Right. Come on, say it's time to get up. Time to get up. Change the 
begins, but you get one. Yes, sir. Change begins with rising up. Those two words literally means a change in posture. Yes. To rise up, hallelujah, many times it means a change in thinking. Yes. Yes. Somebody holler, rise. Rise. Hallelujah. You got to get up from that, 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 that. That position that you were previously in. Hallelujah. Glory to God because I need you to understand. This is part two, incidentally. Hallelujah. Change, uncomfortable but necessary. Yeah. Part two. Hallelujah. You must understand that there are enemies. There are things that are literally fighting you for the change you want. Yes, bro. Come on. And, 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 and contrary to what you, whatever you've been told, what you think, most of those enemies reside in you. Come on, say, I am, I am the, enemy the enemy to my own change. To my own change. Have mercy, Jesus. I want somebody, I'm going to see, can I snatch on you this morning and cause us to wake up this morning. Hallelujah. Yeah. Again, the greatest enemies and forces that are warring against your change are not external. Come on here. Hallelujah. The greatest hindrance to change is something that's on the inside of me. This is why everything on the inside of us has got to be made subject to the scrutiny of the word. Because God is going to challenge our thinking. Every, every belief you have held in, every one of your beliefs are going to be challenged. Yeah. Every bit of faith you think you've got is going to be challenged. Yeah. I've told you this countless times and I'm going to tell you again. Hallelujah. Faith that hasn't been tried is faith that can't be trusted. Jesus, my God. Queen said it all ago. I think my sister said it during her prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't need you to teach me how to have faith and everything is fine. Amen. What do you need faith to pay your bills for when you got a million dollars in the bank? That's right. Come on now. The Bible says hope that is seen is no longer hope. Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't need you to teach me how to act when the check is in the mail. Yeah. Right. I don't need you to teach me how to respond when everything is fine. I need to know how to act, hallelujah, know how to react. I need to know how to be proactive when there's nothing going on the way I, I believe God has told me that it's going to happen. When it looks like everything is contrary to what I'm believing God for. Y'all stay with me. I'm going somewhere. Just hang on. Hallelujah. I'm trying to build a ground here. Uh -huh. I'm trying to get a foundation here. Hallelujah. Amen. And I want to, and I also want to get in your face and tell you that you got to engage the enemy. And the enemy is in you. Because I've told us this countless times. The only thing the devil can use against you is what he finds in you. That's why the Bible, that's why the Bible tells us things like don't give place to the devil. To the devil. Because if you give him place, he's going to use that place. This is why the Bible tells us to be angry and sin not. Let me give you, hallelujah, South Georgia translation. Don't lose your temper. Because if you lose your temper, the devil will find you. And he'll take your temper and make you say stuff you didn't mean to say. Y'all don't want to help me. You do understand there's a difference between being upset and being and, 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 and losing your temper. All right. You can be angry and don't sin. Come on. Oh, that kind of take all the fun out of getting angry. Because the first thing I want to do when I get in, I'm going to tell some folks off. <laughs> Hallelujah. I get, I get shown up angry. I want to cuss. I know. Excuse me. Y'all too holy. Yeah, we would do Oh, y'all so holy, you got to put a brick in your back pocket to sink in the swimming pool. You got you can you so holy, you can't even get wet in the shower. Hallelujah. You too holy. But I'm looking for some real people who are here. If I don't have a constant, consistent touch of God in my life, I'm going to something do something stupid. <laughs> I believe I got some folks in here who can relate to what I'm trying to get over. Hallelujah. We got to engage this enemy. Hallelujah. So that we can implement the change that God wants to occur in our life and ultimately in this ministry. One thing about this ministry, this ministry is going to be marked by change. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're going to constantly be going from one from glory to glory. Hallelujah. From one level of glory to the next level of glory. Hallelujah. We must not become complacent. We must never be stagnant. Hallelujah. The difference between a river and a pond is that a pond don't move. That's why you get algae on a pond. But you don't get algae at the river. Uh, the river is constantly flowing. This is why the Bible gives the knowledge of the life and the spirit. The Bible says, he that believeth on me, as the, as the scripture says, out of his belly shall flow rivers. 
the ponds, rivers, something that's constantly moving. And our lives, hallelujah, somebody say, get in the flow. Our lives are supposed to be constant. There's a constant flow. Hallelujah. There shouldn't be stagnation in the house of God. Stagnant. I'm, I, I don't understand God, church folks saying they bored. How in the world are you bored? Jesus. Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on, Come on. Oh, I'm going to get in your stuff after a while. Hold on. I'm gonna come. Just keep sitting. I'm going to come right down your street in a minute. Glory to God. God because because, because there, there's a, there, there should be a sense of urgency That's in us. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. We need to change. Amen. We can't, we can't let things just keep going the same. Hallelujah. Growth demands change. And I told, you, I told you this last week. I told you change is not something you can wish for. Change is something you got to reach for. Come on now. So you got to reach for. Reach for. Now let's, let's, let's look at some terminologies here. Amen. When I, I took it down to verse 24, I said you got to first rise up. You got to rise up. You got to take your journey. <laughs> you got to rise up. You got to take your journey. Yes. Hallelujah. To rise, to rise again means to change your posture. Yes. Come on. Both physically and mentally. Yes. I mean, you got to change your mental posture first. Yes. Our thinking has got to shift. Yes. There's got to be a change in how we've been thinking. Hallelujah. Yes. We got yes. to change. We, we, we can't. Hallelujah. To rise up means I'm not going to just put up with everything. That's Y'all can say what you want to say, hallelujah, but at a certain point in your life, you got to, you got to adopt the mindset that the thing that you tolerated last season, you ain't going to tolerate That's it this right. season. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. How are you going to ask God for a change when you keep tolerating? Jesus. Let me give you a principle. Anything you tolerate, you can't change. My God. Anything you tolerate, you give it a license to stay the same. That's right. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Anything you won't confront, you, anything you won't challenge, anything you won't confront, you can't change. Mm. We give, you don't understand this, many of us every day, we give this stuff license to be just the same way because we won't confront. Okay, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, we've compassed, oh, before I go on into the depths of 24, let me back up to verse 3 again. You've compassed this mountain long enough. Now, first of all, I want you to see this word mountain, this word mountain. There, there are times that this word mountain has many symbolic meanings depending on the context, yes. depending on how it's used in the text. Yes. There are times when mountain speaks of a spiritual transformation. Yes. Moses went up in the mountain for 40 days and communed with God. Hallelujah. There are times when the mountain has to do with a transformation. Sometimes the mountain means transfiguration. But then there are other times when mountain means obstacle. Yes. And you get the you get the you, you 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 get the symbolic meaning by looking at the context. Yeah. Here we're seeing God telling these people, "It's time to leave this mountain." Yeah. My Lord. This mountain represents a place of personal defeat. Yeah. 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 So you got to make up your mind that you want to change. That's right. That's right. That's right. Because you can't help people who don't want to change. Amen. Right. Uh oh. <laughs> That's mm. right. You come across a person that don't want to change. Don't spend too much time with them. They'll wear you out. My Lord, my Lord. They'll sap, they'll suck all the strength out of you. Amen. Because you can't spend a whole lot. See how pretty this is? But y'all, that's artificial. You can pour water on that all day long. And you're not going to change the appearance of it. You know why? Because it ain't real. Hallelujah. Don't spend a whole lot of time pouring water on something that ain't real. My God, my God. As a matter of fact, the reason why we chose the artificial plant is because it's low maintenance. Yeah. That's the reason why this, the reason why we chose the artificial plant is because it don't require no attention. Y'all yeah. gonna guess this in a minute. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. But you the difference between you and this plant. Your life ain't artificial, so you are gonna have to have some attention in it. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yes. God don't want you to become a fixture in the house of God. Right. <laughs> you part of the frozen chosen. Oh, and the pastor's name is Reverend Rigor Mortis. Oh. Your church is the first church of the deep freeze. Y'all yeah. don't want to help me. <laughs> I heard a brother say one time, now he said, so I'm not picking at anybody's denomination, but this brother was Presbyterian. 
And he stood up in his church and said, I know when the rapture comes, we're going to be caught up first. Because the Bible says the dead in Christ shall rise first. <laughs> now, I didn't say that. He said it. Some folks take pride in their deadness. We've been doing this for 40 years. We don't do that in our church. I wanted to, is there anybody in the house really ready for a Holy Ghost explosion? Not church as usual, but church unusual. Oh, yeah. Ready to see something you've never seen and, yeah. and experience things you've never experienced. Ready yeah. to see signs and wonders and miracles. Yeah. Just ready. Watch this. When the miraculous becomes common. Yeah. Yeah. When the super becomes natural. Yeah. 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 This is the way we're supposed to live. The supernatural realm is the realm we live in. Yeah. Yeah. The church was born in power. The Lord is coming back for a powerful church. Yes. He's not coming back for some weak knee, watered down, anemic, barely getting along, mealing mouth. Ah, yes. oh, come on here, somebody. Yes. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. Yes. Deep, dark, depression, and excessive misery. That's not the kind of people God's coming back for. That's right. That's He's right. coming back for a glorious church. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. So this mountain, as it's used in Deuteronomy 2, verse 3, is, 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 is speaking symbolically of a place of personal defeat. It is speaking of it's speaking uh, symbolically of a place of failure, or it's also speaking of an era of immaturity. Yes. Say an era, era. era, which speaks of a time frame. Yes. Here these folks have been wondering for almost 40 years. Now you know the number 40 in the Bible is the number of testing. Yes. It's the number of probation. Hallelujah. God says, by now. You should have been beyond this. Right. Can we just be honest with ourselves and say, by now, we should have been beyond this? Right. Can we just be real and admit that? Why am I still having to deal with this little low-level devil? Why am I still dealing with this? Surely I thought that by now, somebody holler by now. I thought that by now I would be farther along than this. But when God has you in a holding pattern, yes, come on. when God, hallelujah, have you in a place where he won't seem like he won't let you advance, mm -hmm. and the reality of it is, it ain't, it ain't God that's not letting you advance, okay. it's that stuff inside of you that's not letting not you advance, God. because God ain't holding nobody back, y'all yeah. don't want to help me, and the truth is, we ain't waiting on God, yeah. uh-oh. Now, under the old covenant, before Jesus Christ came, yes, they were waiting on God. But now that Christ has come, the price has been paid, the new covenant has been, has been ratified and implemented. I'm going to submit to you, brothers and sisters, that today we are not waiting on God. Yes, mm -hmm. God is in the process of making adjustments. Yes. He's tweaking them back like in the days of the old TV. I'm not talking about these new TV, back in the days of the old TV. The old antenna when you had to go outside with a with a with a pipe wrench. Oh, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all too young. You don't know what I'm talking about. You had to go outside with a pipe wrench and hook it on the antenna. Hallelujah. And where I live, you could only get three channels. Jacksonville, Savannah, and Albany. Hallelujah. And you had to and you had to have somebody in the house to holler at you. And you had to with a pipe wrench turning the pole. Oh, oh, you went too far. Go back. Then you got the church coming. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> My daddy trying to watch wrestling. Boy, go out there and turn that out. <laughs> Snow all over the screen. Can't see nothing. I'm going out there to turn. Ho! You went too far. Take it back. <laughs> then I try to eat the ease and back. He hollered. Oh, that's it right there. Hold it right there. <laughs> you walk inside, you got a clear picture. Yeah. You know why? Because now you have aimed the antenna in the direction of the frequency of the channel. Oh, if you ever get in the right frequency, hallelujah, then the picture will get a whole lot clearer. The reason why the picture ain't clear right now is because we're not tuned into the frequency. Uh, get your monkey and rich out and go turn that pole. Hallelujah. Get that pipe wrench and turn. Hallelujah. And also on the TV itself, there was a knob called fine tuning. You know, you had the tuner where you flip through channel, but when you get the channel where you want, you had a fine tuner. It made the picture even clearer. Yeah. Hallelujah. I said all that to say this. Hallelujah. The reason why you came to church this morning, hallelujah, is so that Pastor Tom could get the pipe wrench and turn your antenna. Yeah. Yes, sir. 
I'm turning your antenna because I need this picture to get clear to you. I need you to see your predicament. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't see your predicament as long as you're trying to focus on somebody else. Right. I got to see what's going on with me. Yeah. I got to see the areas in my life that needs to be shifted. I got to see the areas in my life that needs fine tuning. I got to see the areas in my life that needs adjusting. Hallelujah. Come on, say, adjust me, Lord. Adjust me, Lord. That's the purpose of good teaching. Purpose of good Bible teaching is to correct wrong thinking. Yes. I don't believe in brainwashing, but I do believe in mind renewal. Talk to me, somebody. Our minds must be renewed with the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Cults do brainwashing, but good Bible teaching renews your mind. Somebody say hallelujah. So the mountain speaks of an era of immaturity. Hallelujah. We got to lay aside childishness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This mountain, God says, quick, quick, quick. You got engaged in, you got, you don't circle this mountain alone. The mountain means that you must be willing to confront whatever or whoever. Yeah. My Lord. Yeah. It's resisting change mm -hmm. and God's purpose and plan in your life. My Lord. Sometimes it's a whatever, sometimes it's a whoever. Whoever. Mm -hmm. All right. That's that right. means I got to be willing to deal with whatever and whoever yes. I got to deal with. She, yes. Mm -mm. And sometimes in order for you to get the way you're going, you're going to have to let some folks get off the bus. That's right. You got to get off. Right. <laughs> a lot. I say you got to let some folks get off the bus. Amen. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you hate them. Uh -uh. That's right. Because hatred has no place in the plan of God. Oh, man, I posted earlier this week, I said, hallelujah, just because a person has been you disconnected from a person don't mean hate got to, be, got to fill that space. Amen. Right. Sometimes it just means that that person's Place in your life is over. Mm -hmm. doesn't, mean, doesn't necessarily mean they're good. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're bad people. Amen. Right. It just simply means that they're no longer conducive mm -hmm. to the purpose that God has. You, you know, sometimes God will let one person come to your life and make one deposit and move. That's it. Right. That's, right. That's, right. That's right. And I've told us. I've told you many times. Stop giving permanent status to temporary people. Amen. Stop putting a period where God only wants you to put a comma. Amen. Hallelujah. Say amen. Amen. So we've got to be willing to confront whatever, whoever is resisting God's purpose and plan for our lives. This, listen to me, brothers and sisters, this is going to require resolve. Yes. It's going to require determination, mm -hmm. and it's going to require courage. Yes. It takes courage to change. Yes. Because change so opposes your current status. Yes. That's why it takes courage to change. My God. It takes resolve. It takes determination mm. to embrace change. Yeah. Change ain't for wimps. Change is not for weak people. Talk come to on, me. Come on, come on. Uh, Anybody in the house want to change? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're going we gonna to see. Uh -huh. All right, I did. We're going to see. <laughs> Because the way you're changing, because the way you prove that you want to change is in your action. Yes, that's right. We can say we want to say it with our lips, yes. but until our life get a hold of it. Yes, sir. Right. Amen. Dr. Martin Luther King called it practical atheism. He said a lot of folks they, they acknowledge the Lord with their lips, but they they, they deny Him with their life. That's right. That's right. He called it practical atheism. Yeah. No, oh, you acknowledge a verbal, you got a verbal, a mental assent. You have a verbal assent to your belief in God, but your life doesn't even doesn't show God anywhere. My Lord, right now. This is something that we can't just talk about. Uh -huh. This has got to be something we got to be about. Be about it. <laughs> I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Yeah. Hallelujah. God's going to touch some folks here shortly. Glory Hallelujah. to God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, thank you, Lord. He brought you here for me to hit your face and tell you about you got to engage the enemy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the enemy is that person you look at in the mirror every day. Yes. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. The devil ain't got nothing on you but what you give him. Mm -hmm. So the season, the, hallelujah, the call of God in this season, just like of that day, many times these historical events have, they have prophetic significance. Yes. Oh, listen to me. Yeah. This is the when, when it comes out. Even though the Bible contains history, the Bible really is not a book of history. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Y'all missing this? Come on. Come on. This is Come not on. a history book, no. even though it contains historical events. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah! Many times when you come across these historical events, these historical events were put in your Bible that they may become spiritual teaching moments. Yes. Yeah. The things that were written beforehand were written for our example. That's what yeah. the, 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 New, the New Testament writer says. These things were written not, watch this, they weren't written to us, but they were written for us. 
Amen. 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 Because these things do have a significance uh, to the audience that they were written, they were written to. Yes. Any book you read, you have to consider context and setting. That's right. yeah. Because it is relative to the people that were written to of that day. Yeah. Yeah. We wasn't there. Amen. But we can still glean lessons. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. From their ordeal. That's right. That's and once we begin to glean the lesson, hallelujah, sometimes the best, sometimes the wise person, watch I'm going to say this, sometimes the wise person is the person that don't have to go through themselves. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the, the wise person is the person who learns from somebody else's yeah. experience. Yeah. Come on, y'all. There's something to me. There's some things you should have to personally experience right. before you understand it's detrimental to your well-being. Right. Right. If I saw you stick your finger in the light socket right. and I saw you right. shake, bake, and carry on, that just told me I'm not going to stick my finger. Amen. Why? Because I saw your reaction. <laughs> Hallelujah. And if it shocked and shook you, it's going to shock and shake me too. So I don't need to put my finger in there. <laughs> You know, sometimes I used to I used to try this sometime with my mom and dad. Sometimes the kids want to do stuff, and you tell them no. And the first thing they say, "Well, everybody else doing it." Mm -hmm. Right, they say. Oh. I remember I remember telling daddy that one day, and dad said, "Well, son, if everybody jump off a bridge, you gonna do it?" Mm -hmm. Well, no. All right then. He said, "Daddy always taught me." He said, "Son, sometimes the popular thing ain't the right thing." Ooh. Right. Oh, right. Yeah. Did you know the church is just as trendy as the world? Yes. 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 You ever seen trends in the church? Yes. The ch I don't know what's wrong with us. We're so quick to jump on bandwagons. Because yes. everybody doing it, we want to do it too. Do it too. Lord, have mercy. Sometimes you need to leave the band anyway. That's right. Talk to me, y'all. Hallelujah. Yes. Just, because some, just because everybody is doing it, it's not the gauge whether or not you should do it. That's right. Because the reality of it is, wrong is wrong. I don't care if everybody yes. doing it. Yes. And right is right, I don't care if a few do it. Hallelujah. Don't judge right and wrong based on the number of participants. That's right. That's right. Say amen. 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 Oh, God, I got to get what I'm trying to go here. Hallelujah. So the call, amen, when you go back down to 24, we told you you got to leave this mountain because the mountain is, in this context, it represents a place of personal defeat. How you know God, how many of you know God wants to get us past our defeat? Amen. I don't care what you went through in your past. That's, right. that's what it is. It's the right. past. Right. Hallelujah. You can get past it. That's, right. that's the first thing I want to tell somebody. You can get past everything you've been through. Yeah. You know, your past does not have to become a prison. That's right. Come that's right. on. Yeah. And hurt does not have to become a home. Come on. Failure is that don't have to be fatal. Come on. You can get past it. Yeah. My question is, do you want to get do past it? Do you want to get past it? I'm going to tell you, I'm going to ask you what Jesus asked the man at the pool of Bethesda. Wilt thou be made whole? Do you want to be whole? Do you want to be made whole? And you know what's the funny part about it, brothers and sisters? These people have been circling this mountain for the same amount of time that man had been laying by the pool. Yes. Hello. 38, almost 40 years. They have been circling the mountain for the same amount of time. Some folks, you see them there in this position. Hallelujah. Five years from now, you see them again, they're in the same place. Hallelujah. Five more years back, you see them in the same place. Now, something wrong. Something wrong. Hmm. If your plight is no better now than it was 10 years ago, you need to make some better choices. Amen. Talk to me. Amen. So you got to rise up now. Verse 24. Deuteronomy 2, 24. You got to rise up. Rise up. Hallelujah. Take your journey. Pass over the river. Come on, say it's time to get back. Come, come on, say, come on over the river. Come on over the river. Come over the river, on. Now, there's three words I want to extract from this passage. We're going to translate so we can meditate. That's fine. Hallelujah. The first, hallelujah, God says, I've given in your hand Sihon, the Amorite, the king, hallelujah, king of Heshbon and his land. God says, I've given you him and his land. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. They may be in possession of it, but it's yours. Mm. Somebody right now got your stuff. Mm. Y'all missing this. Right. There's stuff that God wants to give the body, amen, that's presently occupied by other folks. And the reason why God hadn't already released it to us is because we haven't been ready to take possession of it. Sometimes God will let your enemy hold your stuff while he's developing you. you. Yeah. Come on, y'all. Yeah. So, why? Because that, because unfortunately, many times your enemy is more mature in certain areas. Right. Jesus. Wow. Did you know the Bible said the children of this world in many ways are more wise than the children of the kingdom? My yes. 
Now he didn't say that to our credit. He, he said it to, to really to our shame. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Listen now. Hallelujah. Sihon. Sihon represents the demonic realm that resists and opposes God's purposes. My Lord. God says, I'm finna give him to you. Mm -hmm. Jesus. You finna overtake him. You about to overtake Sihon. Jesus. I got to tell somebody. Come on. You are about to take, overtake Sihon. Yeah. Because Sihon represents the demonic realm mm -hmm. that resists and opposes God's purposes. God has a specific plan and purpose in and already designated in your life. And every Sihon, hallelujah, that has erected itself against God's plan in your life, Sihon is about to be dealt with. Yeah. Come on. This is why it's so important that we let God, uh, let God um, that, that we engage the enemy, let God change us, let God redirect our focus, because there's a Sihon in your life that's got to be dealt with. My Lord, my Lord. And Sihon is an Amorite. An Amorite speaks of one that dwells in high places. Somebody say high places. High places. Now the Bible teaches us, amen, hallelujah, that we don't do that. In the, in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, that we don't war against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world. Watch this. Spiritual wickedness in high, high places. And please understand, I'm going to blow some of your mind now. When, I'm, when I say high places, I'm not talking about Washington, D.C. All right. Yeah. It's right here. High places speaks of those places between your ears. Jesus. Don't miss it. Hold on now. Mm. Mm. My mind. Yes, the highest place in you right now on a practical everyday level, on a practical level, the highest place in you is your mind. Why, why, do, why do you think there's such a war for your mind? My Lord. Because whoever controls your mind controls your life. My Lord. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. The mind. The mind. The mind. My the sister mind. told me she was a she was a, a psychology major. Hallelujah. Psychology, the study of human behavior. Why do people act the way they act? I submit to you, and for the most part, people act the way they act because they think the way they think. And I believe that whatever you predominant, whatever whatever is the predominant thought in your mind will begin to determine your behavior. Yeah. See, our problem in the church is we try to get folk to behave without first affecting how they think. You will never listen. To me, you will never get permanent right behavior out of folks until you get right thinking out of folks. Amen. Because the thing that you really believe, the thing that's really the foremost on your mind, is going to be carried out in your daily living. That's Hallelujah. So Amorite speaks of those high places. It speaks of those places that are presently occupying spaces in your mind that has to be confronted and dealt with. My Lord. Oh God, we're going to have to go back for some years and let God deal with some stuff. Yeah. Hallelujah. There's some stuff that's years that's been sitting in your mind for My years. God. Hallelujah. That's going that is being confronted in this season. Jesus. Y'all can say what you want to say, but just call somebody wave the hand over it doesn't mean that stuff left your mind. That's right. That's right. You can cast out demons, but you can't cast out mindsets. That's right. right. Some stuff has to be taught out. Are you listening to me? Amen. You don't lay hands on somebody and cast out the way they think. Amen. I wish we could. That's right. But that's not how it works. Amen. Romans 12, 1 tell, Romans 12, 2 rather tells us, hallelujah, for one, be not conformed. Don't be fashioned after. Don't pattern yourself after the world, after the systems of the world. He says, but be you transformed by the renewing of the mind. Yeah. Y'all, that takes time. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Only when our minds are removed, then we can prove. To prove means to know by experience. That's right. Then we can prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me move on. I, I want to get, I'm going to get this far right out of time here. Amorite talking about a high place. So we got Sihon, we got he's an Amor, he's an Amorite, the king of Heshbon. Say Heshbon. Heshbon. Heshbon speaks of a device. It speaks of a reasoning. It speaks of something fabricated. Uh -huh. Say fabricated. fabricated. It speaks of something that's been formed. Think about a weapon. A fabrication. A lot of times people, watch this, a lot of times there, there are many people who operate in the realm of fabrication because they don't want to handle the truth. That's right. My Lord. My right. Lord. My Lord. A fabrication is something that was born out of the minds of people. Mm. Fabrication. Yes. Yeah. Because you don't have to fabricate truth. Right. All truth needs is to be declared. Amen. Right. Yeah. All truth needs is to be spoken and declared. 
and truth needs to be stood upon. Amen. That's right. Yes. All right, so now we got Sihon, we got Amorite, we got Heshbon. All three of these things are forces that are at work in us. Mm -hmm. Because you would be surprised at the lies that are resident in your mind. Yes. That's right. Things that's against your advancement. Our battle is against unseen spiritual forces that exert pressure from the spiritual world. These spiritual forces through strategies and devices. So that's what Amorite and Hezbon is. When you, put them together, when you put them together, because these things work in tandem. Yeah. Say in tandem. in tandem. That means they work together. Yeah. Watch this. These are, spiritual, these are spiritual forces, and they use strategies and devices, plots and plans for the purpose of holding people in bondage. Not God. Not God. Well, you got a reason to think like you think. You got a reason to feel like you feel. Girl, all the trouble you done been through, the people need to just understand. <laughs> Giving you a reason not to change. My Lord. My Lord. Well, Pastor Tom, you just don't understand. They hurt me so bad. Who in the world has been hurt worse than Jesus? My Lord. My Lord. Jesus stood and wept over a whole city. He wept and said, oh, Jerusalem. Literally, he wasn't weeping over a city. He was weeping over a condition. Yeah, my God. He was weeping over a fallen spiritual system that had failed its people. Hallelujah. He had wept over a system that literally became a cloud without water. My There's God. nothing like seeing a cloud on a hot day. My yeah. God. Come on. My God. Come on. Come on. Mm. And then only be disappointed because the cloud just went over without dropping any rain. My God. Yeah. My God. Clouds without water, Jesus. Come on. You got the promise of rain, yes, yes. but no presentation of it. Come on now. Some folks come in your life with the promise of something, yeah. no. but they don't, deliver. they don't deliver. Can anybody relate to what I'm saying? Yeah. They come in, they come in, they come rolling in like a cloud on a hot sunny day, and it looks like they, it looks like they're going to refresh you with the shower. Yeah. Hallelujah! And all them jokers do is come in your life and take from your life. Yes. Yeah. Talk to me, somebody. Yeah. They come in and leave you worse than what you was before you met them. Yes. Can I get a witness in the house here? Yes. Yes. Mm, they're spiritual forces. Hallelujah. That works through strategies and devices for the purpose of holding people in bondage. Hallelujah. Yes. Mm, but the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5. Listen yes. to this. Y'all know this. It said, the weapon of our warfare are not carnal. Yes. But they're mighty through God. Hallelujah. They're not carnal. They're not temporal. They're not weak. They're not dependent on human strength. Yes. They were not devised in human imagination. Jeez. They're not carnal. Hallelujah. Yes. They're not man devised. Hallelujah. These weapons that we have in God. Huh? They were not cooked up in a laboratory. Hallelujah. Yes. They were not created in as a fabrication of man. Jeez. But these weapons are mighty through God. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Mighty through God means they're powerful, they're capable. Come on, say, I got a capable weapon. Yes. Hallelujah. Come on, say it's full of miracle power. Of miracle hallelujah. Power. The Greek word is dunamis. We got full of, we got dunamis, dynamite. Hallelujah. Inherent power. Hallelujah. Jesus said in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Yes. Yes. I'm trying to find some folks in this room that's full of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Not, you're not, you, we're going to get you full. Yes, Lord. Jesus. Then he said, not carnal, they matter to God for the pulling down. Say pulling down. Pulling down. down. This word means demolition. You know how it is when a, when a builder comes in yes. and there's a structure that is present, they own a piece of now. property. Come on. But the builder wants to build a better building. There's something better he wants to do. In order to put a better building in place, you got to first, sometimes you got to do a demolition project That's right. before you can do a building project. Come on. As a matter of fact, many times the building project begins as a demolition project. Right. Come on, so you got to tear something down you before you can build something up. Come on, say so God's going to tear some stuff down. There's some things that has to be dismantled. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Thinking, images, imaginations, casting down thought, bringing every thought to the obedience of the knowledge of Christ. Everything in us. This is why I told you what I said a few moments ago. Everything in us is going to be challenged. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, amen. God said in the book of Hebrews, yet once more I'm going to shake the world. Shake the world. 
I'm going to shake. He's going to be shaking. Y'all don't understand it because you don't feel nothing quaking in the natural. But there's an earthquake in the land. There's a shaking take place right now. The church is in a shaking. What's the purpose of the shaking? So that God might dismantle everything that is not conducive to his purpose in our life. It's got to lose its grip on your life. Yeah. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, if you like me, you ought to be glad about it. That's right. Hallelujah. Say, tear it down, Lord. Tear it down. As a matter of fact, God, he's he going to use you to tear it down. Because the power, this power is at work in you. That's right. Yeah. Listen to me. The Bible says, John, 1 John 4, 4, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You have the greater one in you. You got the power in you to dismantle, to demolish everything. To, you got the power in you to demolish arguments. Okay. That's why, that's why come, I don't argue with foolish people. I leave them in their folly. That's right. Come on. Amen. Some things you don't, you don't argue with fools. That's right. Amen. Uh-oh. The Bible says that this. He says, if you answer a fool according to his folly, you become one with him. <laughs> Hallelujah. And one thing I do, one thing I do not intend to do, I do not intend to empower foolishness. That's right. Amen. I don't want to give foolishness a voice. That's right. I don't want to give foolishness a platform in my life. Right. Pulling down stronghold, destruction, pull down with violence. This word stronghold talks about a castle, a fortified position. It's a mindset full of despair. It's a mindset. It's a, it's a place of no hope. Watch this. A stronghold is a place of no change. It's a place in us that is resistant to change. It is something in us that don't want to change. Don't want to shift. Don't want We want to keep following the same old past. That we've been following. Don't want to turn it loose. Lord, even Lord. though you know it's killing you. Yes. But you still don't want to stop it. That's right. Jesus. That's a stronghold. That was Help me, Jesus. Come on. Yes. It's a stronghold. Jesus. It's destroying your family. What makes a person continue in a direction that's killing his family? Why do they keep doing it? Yeah. And you sit back and you wonder why? why? Don't you know this is killing you? But why are you still doing it? Because it's a stronghold. Stronghold. Yeah. And until we acknowledge, until we acknowledge what it is and take ownership of sometimes you can't disown it until you first own it. My Lord. The key, even Alcoholics Anonymous teach you that. The key to getting out of the dilemma is to admit you in one. Amen. Even AA got that much sense. You got to first admit you got a dilemma. But as long as you don't think you got a problem, you're not going to be seeking change because you don't think you need to. That's Am I right about it? Right? Is that right? As long as you don't see your problem, you're not going to seek change. Hallelujah. As long as, you, as long as you become satisfied with where you are now, you're not going to seek any further experience. My Lord. My Lord. Mm. Say amen. 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 God has a promised land for these people. And here they are stuck in the wilderness. Yeah. 40 years wonder. God said, come on, it's time to go to Canaan. It's time to go northward. Hidden. It's, it's amazing this word northward in the Hebrew. It, it has the connotation of something hid or something dark, meaning something mysterious, meaning something that you haven't experienced yet. There's something bigger over here. There's something greater. God says, come northward. I got something better for you. Yes. But you got to first be willing to leave where you are. Jesus. You, can't get what you, you can't get what God has for you until you first be willing to leave where you presently are. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, let me give you three practical things. Hallelujah. I'm cutting through the chase. I got a lot of stuff here. <laughs> Let's get this strategy. Say, God, God has, a has a strategy. That means that God doesn't do things just any kind of way. God is the most strategic being there is. That means, family, that as we learn to walk with God, we also must become strategic. Yeah. Yeah. We can't just do stuff any kind of way. There is a definite strategy in God. There's a definite way that God does things. Again, God is the most strategic being there is. God, see, God has a plan. And a plan, see, the plan is composed of strategies. Because the plan, hallelujah, a plan speaks of an action that you're going to take 
that's going to implement that's going to implement a strategy to get you to your desired result. Amen. Say amen. amen. Now, first of all, hallelujah, the strategy, these I call it the three essentials for victory. Essential means you got to have this. If something is essential, that means it's not optional. Come on, y'all. Oh, I hope y'all listening to me. Maybe that's why you ain't shocked. That means you're listening. Amen. That's good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number one. Number one. Write this down. Position. The first point in the strategy of essentials for victory is this word position. Yes. This word position, it speaks of your standing with God. We sing a song around here sometimes. Where do you stand? Who's on the Lord's side? The Lord's side. Did you know that's the question Moses asked when he came down out of Sinai? Yes. And the people were around a golden calf. Moses asked the question, who's on the Lord's side? Right. Let him come to me. Yes. And do you know the Bible says that there was a, re a rebellion led by a fellow named Korah? Y'all know, come on. Come on. Yes. And later on in the book of Jude, Jude warns us to not follow after the era of Korah and don't go in the way of Cain because Cain was a brother killer. Yeah. And Korah was the, was the spirit that rebels against godly leadership. Yeah, Jesus. Because they, they, Korah thought he knew better. I know just as much as you know, Moses. Yeah, Come on. Yeah. Those, that, those that engaged in that rebellion, the Bible says the earth opened up and swallowed them. Yeah. I don't think nobody in the room want to get swallowed up in here this morning. But I will say this, that if we don't yield to God's plan, your circumstances will swallow you up. Amen. Number one, again, position. That means you must know your standing with God. This is the beginning place of any effective change. Before you can really change, you've got to first know how you stand with God. Yeah. Hallelujah. You must know and understand your position. Your placement where you can stand. Hallelujah. You got, you got to know where you stand with God. Watch this. You got to know where you stand with God and then stand up in it. Say, stand up. Stand up. In your position. Come on, say, this is the season. Say it out loud. Say, this is the season where I'm going to take a stand. I'm not going to put up with everything I've been putting up with. Come on here, y'all. Again, as long as you put up with it, the longer you're going to delay change. That's right. That's right. Things can't change in your life until you do. This is why we constantly say you got to be the change. I think former President Obama was the one I heard say that first. We got to go out and be the change that we want to see. Change is, again, because he was teaching us, he was telling us the same thing the Word is telling us, is that change, hallelujah, does not begin externally. It begins internally. Yeah. Your situation ain't gonna change until you do. That's right. That's right. Somebody can take you right now and set you down in the middle of an ideal situation. But if they don't do something about your mind first, it won't be long before you have this looking just like that. You know why? Because the common denominator in both scenarios is you. And if you don't let God change you, listen to me, y'all. Don't get sleepy on me. If we don't let God change us, you're going to keep having what you've always had. Right? That's all I'm trying to say. My Lord. That's all I'm trying to say. My Lord. So first of all, position. Know who you are in Christ Jesus. Do you know who you are in Christ? Because when you, know, when you really begin to know who you are in Christ, my position in Christ teaches me that I don't have to put up with just anything. You're a child of the king. Amen. You ain't got to put up with some stuff. That's right. Even if it means you being by yourself. That's and so right. be it. That's right. That's right. I'd rather be alone yes. than to be with the wrong people. Jesus. Change. Change. Yes. Position. Hallelujah. Number two is this word. The second letter P. I call it the three P's. Three P's. First one is position. position. The second word is the word perspective. perspective. Say perspective. Perspective. Perspective has to do with how you see things. Perspective has to do with your viewpoint. 
See, your perspective, the reason why perspective follows position is because your perspective is based on your position. Yeah. Yeah. It is your position that changes and shapes yeah. your perspective. Yeah. Understanding, your understanding of your position is what shapes your perspective. Say this, say, my understanding, my understanding of, my of my position is what shapes, is what shapes my perspective. Uh, Many times we send our children off to college and they get in these liberal universities right. and they twist and choke all the truth out of them. That's true, I know. Y'all don't want to talk. You know, a lot of these liberal professors, after why have our children do not have, have our children doubting the reality of God? That's right. That's true. Because he gets up with his philosophical deduction and humanistic reasoning, and our children many times haven't been haven't been properly prepared. Oh, come on, y'all. That's yeah. true. Amen. And we send them hallelujah. We send them off to the lion's den, mm. and these professors with their philosophical reasonings and humanistic deductionings. And, they, and they, they start presenting things and they start saying all this secular humanism and all of a sudden your child not even, not even sure they got faith anymore. My God, yeah. my God, it's true. Did you know the last, the last statistic that I read? The statistics said that 80% of children, 80% of young people, when they lose home, when they leave home and go to the university, they lose their faith. Yeah. That's shocking. That just simply means that our kids are not being prepared. Uh -oh. And the reason why they're not being prepared is because we're prepared. Because even you yourself, you get in the right position, you find yourself in the right circumstances, you ain't even sure what you believe in. Oh, that person is quiet in here now. Not even sure what to know. I don't know. I know God, he, he, I don't know. Well, he did it before. <laughs> I don't know about this time. I, know, I, know. I need all to pray for me. Because it's so rough, I tell you. I'm so low until I got to look up to see down. Y'all miss that. I, I need y'all to pray for me. Because I tell you what, I'm so low that I got to reach up to tap my shoes. We, get, we find ourselves in scenarios. And our faith in God just melt like a snowball in the August sun. My Lord. What is wrong with us? We get in church and shout hallelujah, skip and jump, jump pews, swing from the chandelier, and then you find yourself in circumstances that's, that ain't good. All of a sudden, you've lost all your faith. What's wrong with us? This is no time to be drawing back. This is no time to be abandoning your faith. That's right. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to get let God settle you in your position. That's it. You got to know who you are in Christ know who Jesus. You are. And you got to know who Christ is in you. Hallelujah. Yes. The Bible says it's Christ in you. That's the hope of glory. Yes. You got to know who he is in you. That way when all things are going negative, yes. hallelujah. When it don't look like it's going to work, hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. You can still say, on Christ the solid rock, I stand. All of the ground. Saying, Hallelujah! I'm not gonna let where I am determine who I am. I don't care if I got a pocket full of money; I'm still me. I don't care if I'm broke. Hallelujah! I'm still me. If I ain't got a dollar to change, I'm still me. If I can pull out twenties one after the other, I'm still me. I'm not gonna let what I got determine who I am. Hallelujah! I'm not gonna let where I am determine who I am. I'm a child of God. I got a position in Christ. I got caught in the spirit. Somebody wave your hand and shout yes. Understand your position. Because that's what's going to shape your perspective. Your hallelujah. Everybody else looking and all they can see is lemons. But you look and you see lemonade. All other folks, they look and all they can see is raw dough. But you look and you see biscuits. Y'all ain't gonna help me. Hallelujah. Everybody else looking and they see all the bad. But you take a look at this and I see some good. Yeah. Oh, I see the good. Good. I got a, my perspective. I got a, I got a biblical worldview. 
The Bible says about, y'all remember we talked about Joshua and Caleb. Yeah. The Bible says they had another spirit. Hallelujah. Ten spies come out with the Hebrew poet. In their giants over there. We can't take the land. We look like grasshoppers. But Caleb said, we are able. We're able. We're able to go up and take the country and possess the land from the Jordan to the sea. Though the giants may be there, I'll wait to head down. God has given us the victory. Somebody shout victory. Come on, say we're able. We're able. We're able. That's my perspective. New beginnings. Hey, new beginnings. My perspective is that we're able. We're able to do what God says we can do. We're able to have this building. We're able to have this property. We're able to have everything that God says we can have. We're going to have it in Jesus' name. We're going to have it. We're going to have it. God is not moved by the size of your bank account. He know he ain't got no money when he talked to you. He know you was broke when he called you. But if I can just get you in position. God says, I got a way to funnel it to you. I just got to get you in position. And then don't you came in and quit because it get hard. Talk to me, somebody. Because the reality of it is, brothers and sisters, if you stand for God, he'll stand for you. If you make it, hallelujah, you dig your heels in, you dig in, you lock your jaw like a Georgia Bulldog. Come on, say, I'm going to lock in. The other team may shake, rattle, and roll, but I'm locked in. Come on, say, I'm locked in. I'm tied up, tangled up, wrapped up. This is no time to be looking around. This is no time to be licking your thumb and trying to see which way the wind blows. This is no time to be taking public opinion polls. This is no time for you to be letting folk vote. Hallelujah. You got to stand on God's word, even if you're standing by yourself. Hallelujah. Because if you stand by yourself, if you're standing alone, you're not alone. I got to put a bow on this. We're going to pray. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let me see him. Yes, Glory God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, Thank you, Lord. for just a minute, perspective is how you see the situation. Yes. How you see it. Perspective, you, you don't deny that the situation exists. That's right. I'm not talking about denial. Yeah, I got a situation here. Yes. But I choose to look at it differently. That's right. I choose to look at it through the lens of faith. Because I trust God. I trust what he said. This is why every time, listen to me, every problem, listen to me, brothers and sisters, every problem is nothing but an opportunity in disguise. Every time you find yourself dealing with a problem, all problems are, are opportunities to make corrections. That thing didn't come to overcome. Trouble may come, but it ain't got to overcome. That's it. Trouble's going to come. And many times God will use that very problem to launch you into your destiny. Number one, position. Number two, perspective. Number three, posture. Say posture. See, my posture has to do with my attitude. Posture. Posture. Your attitude is how you can approach any resistance to God's best. Because you're going to have some resistance. And many times that resistance is going to come from people who you think right now are your biggest supporters. Amen. Position, perspective, posture, your mental disposition. It's time to be assertive. When it comes to the things of God, we can't be passive, mealy mouth, milk toast, mediocre. 
We got to get out of that. That's right. That's God right. help me. That, that's I'm, I'm, tell, I'm, I'm telling. On, I'm, I'm telling on your pastor now. That's right. When you see him, tell him I said. <laughs> Passive, yeah. mediocre, procrastination. We ain't got to do that right now. Yeah, we got to do some stuff right now. We got to do some stuff right now. Some stuff ain't, hallelujah, ain't no time like the present. No time like the some stuff you can't put off. A metallurgist, he knows anybody work with metal, with metal. But Ken, you work with metal. Steve, y'all, you guys, y'all well. You know, when you take that acetylene torch and heat that, if you got a piece of metal you're trying to shape, you take that acetylene torch and heat that iron up, mm -hmm. you got to strike while that iron is hot if you want to shape it. Because if you wait till it cool off, you can beat all day long. That steel ain't moving. But if you get it hot enough and get it red, you can take a straight piece of steel and bend it any way you want. My God. Because then, because you got it hot enough. Why is it so hot in your life? Can't you feel the hammer hitting you? Can't you feel the hammer of God striking on your metal? Can't you see God is shaping a work? Don't you see God is preparing the metal for his purpose? That's why it's so hot in your life. Lord, have mercy. I'm going to catch this here. It's crazy right now, ain't it? Ain't it crazy? Come on, come on, look at me. Right up here. I want you to look right at me. Now, I ain't call your name so don't nobody know I'm talking about you. But it's crazy right now, ain't it? We got situations that's crazy. We got stuff we did with we thought we would never have to deal with. Yeah, not this. Yeah. I never saw myself having to deal with nothing like this. But it's crazy now. Yeah. And the reason why it's crazy right now is because that's God heating up the metal. Yeah. Oh, you gotta catch this. Right. See, because the devil, see that, oh, if you listen to the devil, the devil thinks you're being set up to be defeated, but that's a lie in the pit of hell. You're not being set up to be defeated. You're being fashioned for victory. Oh, God, thank you. You're being fashioned for victory. Just like the silversmith heats the silver. Just like the goldsmith heats the gold. Why? To remove the impurities. And I'm told that a silversmith, you know how the silversmith know the silver's ready? He can see his reflection in it. Come on now. <laughs> he ain't gonna stop till he can see himself. Wonder who's working on your life. And he's not going to stop until you be a reflection of who he is. Because when it comes down to it, all of our lives are supposed to take on the reflection of our Heavenly Father. So he's got the heat up right now. Some of you worrying about your finances right now. I can feel it all in the spirit here. You're worrying about finances right now. The money is funny right now. Seems like it always gets slim around this time of year, but this is unusual as so. You're worried about financial difficulty. You're worried about how you're going to do this. How am I going to make my ends meet? How am I going to take care of my obligations? How am I going to take care of this? How am I going to do that? Hallelujah. Well, the secret is, glory to God, is get your, your mind back into the things of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Because God also going to have the purse strings in your account. And God knows how to, let me tell you something about God. God knows where all the silver is. Yeah. He knows where all the gold is. Hallelujah. Those contracts that you need for your business, God knows how to bring key people into your life oh, to get God. you what you need. Talk to me, somebody. God knows every association. He knows every agreement. He knows every person you need. He knows, hallelujah, somebody got a contract with your name on it. Oh, hey. oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Hallelujah. He knows, but he don't want you to focus on that. He wants you to focus on him. Jesus told Peter one day, when it came time to pay the taxes, Jesus told Peter, catch the fish, and the gold will be in his mouth. Amen. <laughs> you, just, you just focus on the fish. Come on, honey. And I put I, I, and the money is in his mouth. Yeah. Don't focus on the money. Don't ever let money be the focus of your children. Yeah. New beginnings. Don't ever let money be the focus. That's right. Because if money ever becomes the focus, we won't move. 
Tell, tell y'all pastor I said. Don't focus on money. Don't focus on folks. Because right. folks are flaky. Yes, sir. One day they'll tell you they're with you. Yeah. And the next day they'll deny you. Like, like Peter, I don't know him. I don't know him. I, know him. I ain't never seen him before in my life. People will do that to you. You ever seen folks, they're with you as long as, long as some other folks ain't around. But then times some other folks come around, they get funny at you. Y'all yeah. oh, looking at me crazy because y'all know folks like that. Oh, they, oh, yo, y'all were down. We were down when we were just us. But when, it looked like when some other folks come around, they get funny. Yeah. All of a sudden now, wow. you slap heads and buck fists, you know, all of a sudden now you look like you don't know me. Why? Oh, because they come around. That's what it is. Uh, I tell you what, when they leave, I want you to keep it being that same way. Matter of fact, when they leave, you go on with them. Talk to me, somebody. Because life is too short to deal with folks who can't decide whether or not they want to be with you. You want to be my friend only when it's convenient for you. The devil is alive. Fair weather friends. Say position. Position. Say perspective. perspective. Say posture. posture. These are the three essentials for victory. You got to understand who you are in Christ Jesus. Yes. Your perspective, you got a biblical worldview. Yes. My perspective is one of faith. Thank you, Lord. And my posture is an attitude of victory. Right. Say expectation. expectation. The kingdom of God. You know, the Bible says. In Mark 11, 12, the kingdom suffers violence. And the violent take it by force. That means that the kingdom of God advances with assertive force. This is why we can't be passive in being the kingdom. We got to be assertive. We must be assertive. Hallelujah. We must be aggressive. There's a certain part of our, uh, of our perspective that's got to be aggressive. When it comes to the things of God, we got to be aggressive. We got to go after the things of God with Amen. passion. Amen. When it comes time to go to church, Sunday morning, nobody, nobody. keep you out of the house of God. I'm going to the house of the Lord. I'm going to assemble myself with those of like precious faith. I believe pastor going to say something this morning that's going to help me. I believe a song that's going to be sung that's going to speak to my situation. Hallelujah. Yeah, you can serve God in the house, but there's some things you ain't going to get at the house. You got to come out to the house of God. And finally, my brother, to that Paul said, finally, brother, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his mind, put on the full armor, the whole armor, that you may stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Let's go, son. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may stand, hallelujah, and have it done all to stand. I need you to stand. New beginners, we got to stand in this season. This is our season. This is our season. This is the season for this body. Let me expand it. Hold it one minute. Let me expand it. Hold it. This is the season for your family. Yes. I know it's crazy. Yes. I know it's looking crazy. Yes. But go check the biblical record. There's always a crucifixion before there's a resurrection. There's always a dying before raising. Things have to die before they can live. That's right. That's right. It's crazy right now. That's good. Because what happens is this. In the midst of the craziness, God is redirecting our focus. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, say, my change, my change. is imminent. Yeah. That, means it's, that, that means it's going to happen anymore. Yeah. Watch me change right before your very eyes. Yeah. One day y'all will look at me and wonder, God, what happened to him? Somebody said, that's what change do for you. Yeah. Change, watch this. Watch this. Change makes you unrecognizable to people who thought they knew you. My Lord. What happened? My Lord. Trying to figure it out. Some of y'all about to be unrecognizable. Yes, sir. Because you got people in your life that's been trying to define you. And they have defined you according to something that they thought. 
Say, but watch me. Watch me. Become unrecognizable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, even going to know who I am. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm about to come out with something so different. Yeah. Th th this change, because that's, that's what radicalism did. Yeah. People thought you were this, they thought you were this quiet, calm, reserved, you know, laid back. And yeah, you all of that. Yeah. But when change hit your life, yeah. the Bible says when the anointing came on Saul, it turned him into another man. There's something about the anointing that it doesn't just break yokes. It turns you around. Yeah. Turns you into a whole other being. Now, we're going to open this altar. We're going to pray. We're going to have communion shortly. Yeah. But I want to pray. Yeah. And I'm praying specifically. I want you to give me something soft. Yes. I may give you a song in just a minute. But just play me some soft. Give me some soft meditative meta chords right now. Thank you, Lord. As the old preacher said, better creation. That's a word that was made up in the church. It's a cross between meditation and consecration. Better creation. Thank you, Lord. The three specific areas, those are areas we were just talking about, position, perspective, and posture. God's doing the work inside of us individually and corporately, but there's an individual work being done first. We told you this before. There's nothing really can be done on a corporate level until there's an individual thing done. Change. Never again will I settle for church as usual. That's right. That's right. My Lord, thank you, Lord. This is why I'm not concerned about how the church down the street's doing. It. That's right. I'm not trying to go and copy and paste anything That's nobody right. else is doing. Amen. Amen. Because I know what God has for this house. Is unique and specific to this house. I thank God for all of the ministers. I thank God for what they're doing. But that's not, but they are not my gauge. My gauge. It's the Lord and His and His emphasis here. That's my gauge. And we're gonna focus on that for the next few moments. I want you to look inside your own heart. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I said that word a while ago. I said the word unrecognizable. Let me talk to my Facebook audience before we leave our live stream. Yes, Lord Jesus. Facebook audience, y'all bear with me just a minute. Facebook audience is not unusual that you tuned in. I don't believe in consequences. I only believe in God incidences. God sequences. Nothing just happens. This is not happenstance that you were tuned in with us today. This is not something that you just woke up this morning. I think I would tune in with them. No, 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 no. God set you up. You are witnessing a divine center. God set you up. God calls you to tune in so that he can speak to you about the change that needs to be implemented in your life. You can't leave this broadcast and go back to church as usual. Because if you try to go back the way you came, hallelujah, there's going to be something gnawing on the inside of you. The Bible says when three magi, when three wise men came to visit Jesus, came to see Jesus, King Herod said, when you find him, bring me word that I may come worship him too. That wasn't what Herod had in his mind. Herod wanted to kill the Lord Jesus. Anytime you go on a quest to find God's purpose, there's always going to be an error that's going to try to kill God's purpose in your life. And I'm telling you, Facebook friends, the spirit of Herod is in the land today. When Moses was born, Pharaoh that day he issued a decree, kill all the babies. When Jesus was born, Herod, the same spirit that was in Pharaoh, issued a decree, kill all the babies. There's something the enemy is trying to stop in this season. But it's not going to be stopped because God is protecting the seed. We want to thank you for joining in with this Facebook family. I invite you to inbox us. Direct, direct message me. If you want further prayer, send me your email address. I can I send you some literature. I send you some of these notes from today's teaching. We're praying with you. We love you. And we're looking forward to seeing all of you next week. Amen. At this time, God bless you. We're going to leave the live stream now.